This is your laptop. Your job gave it to you for work stuff. You know, spreadsheets and reports, emailing Brenda about the McDougal account. It is a tool, a boring, joyless tool. But then you clock out, you go home, you feed your cat, you feed yourself, and right before the existential dread kicks in, a memory bubbles up. It's a memory of you, younger, happier, booting up your Super Nintendo, hearing that familiar right before you get lost in a magical land of mushrooms and dinosaurs. If only you could recapture that magic. But wait, what if I told you that this very laptop could become a retro gaming beast? One that, with the push of a button, can transform into a retro gaming machine that plays all your old favorite games. Is that something you'd want? All right, good. Because that's what this video is about. Hey there, how you doing? I'm TechTweeb, welcome. Thanks for clicking on the video today. If you're familiar with my channel, you know two things about me. One, I have a reoccurring dream that I'm on a game show hosted by my third grade teacher and that the grand prize is that she spanks me on live television. And two, I talk a lot about retro games. I always think I've covered everything, but then, then I'll check the comments and I'll see a bajillion questions about something I totally forgot to talk about. In this case, it's retro gaming on a laptop. So, all right, let's do this. Today, I'm gonna show you how to turn your boring old spreadsheet machine laptop into a retro gaming powerhouse. This method is fast, free, and it makes your laptop feel like it has a superpower. And get this, the whole thing takes like 10 minutes. Seriously, you could be playing Super Mario World before the crushing weight of adulthood sets back in. There are different methods of playing retro games on a laptop, or any computer really. The topic of this video is retro games on a laptop, but these same pr principles apply to any PC in general. But in my opinion, the simplest and easiest and best way to play retro games on a computer, especially a laptop, is with a little program called Retrobat. Retrobat is more or less a Windows version of Botocera. It's meant to give you the Botocera experience, but instead of it being an entire operating system, it's a program that you run from Windows. The cool thing is that it does all of the hard work for you. Downloading emulators and front-end stuff, setting up controllers, configuring everything. All you need to do is install the thing, add some games, and then, then that that's it. <laughs> you can start playing. It gives you a clean, simple emulation station interface with uh, tons of customization options and support for like everything. Seriously, anything from Atari up to PS3 and Xbox 360 and beyond that if you can believe it. Retrobat is the perfect way to dip your toes into the world of emulation. You can add themes, scrape your box art, slap on CRT shaders, overlays, all sorts of fun things you can tinker with. And somehow it's completely free, like zero dollars. Just some awesome nerds out there making magic so we can play Boogerman on a spreadsheet machine. So Retrobat developers, whoever you are, thank you. You guys are freaking legends. Before we dive into setup mode, let's talk about what you actually need. And honestly, the only thing you really need is a laptop or any Windows computer. That's it. You, you can install Retrobat right onto your internal storage, dump your games in there, and start playing right away. And yes, you can use a keyboard. I know it sounds janky, and it is a bit, but trust me, it works. I even made a whole video about how keyboard gaming is not only doable, it's, it's kind of awesome in a weird, clacky way. But if you want to level up the experience, there are a few upgrades you can consider. The first is external storage. You can install Retrobat on a USB stick or an SD card if your laptop has a card slot. That way you're not eating up internal space and then you'll have a portable emulation drive that you can bring with you and plug into any computer and have all your games and settings and save games go along with you. This is a, this is a really nice setup. I'll link to my favorite USB stick in the thingy below. And of course, controllers. Most folks will want at least one controller. A cheap wired Xbox 360 controller works great for this. Or go wireless. I highly recommend the 8-bit Doe SN30 Pro. This is my favorite controller for retro games. I even reviewed it if you want to hear me nerd out for 10 minutes. I like it so much that I bought two of them. Oh, speaking of which, you can totally play multiplayer games like this. So if you're looking to convince a friend or a girlfriend or a friend's girlfriend's friend to play games with you, then grab a second controller. Or even four, if you want to whip out some four-player arcade games at parties, like I do. All those, uh, all those parties that I get invited to. All right, let's quit mucking about and get this party started on my laptop, shall we? First, we need to download the Retrobat installer. 
I'll drop a link to their GitHub below. Just grab the .exe file from the latest release. You can also snag it from their official site, and then you run the installer to begin the install. If Windows pops up with a scary warning about unknown software, don't panic. That's, that's just Windows trying to protect you from the boogeyman. No boogeyman here though, so click more info and install anyway. You can go with the default options except when it asks you where to install. If you're using a USB stick or an SD card, be sure to point the installer to that drive. I'm just tossing mine on the C drive. Oh, this is a portable installation, by the way. You can just move the folder wherever you want it. Let it do its thing. It'll take a few minutes. And when it's done, hit finish. And that's that's it. Retrobat's installed. There should be a shortcut on your desktop, or you can just launch it from wherever you installed it. When it boots up, you'll be greeted by a fancy little animation, and then you'll see the glorious Retrobat interface. You can navigate with your mouse or your controller if you have one. It should be automatically detected, or your keyboard. You can use the arrow keys to move and Z and X are confirm and back and enter opens the menu and backspace opens the quick menu. You'll see some built-in playlists and demos but we're not messing with that stuff. And now that we're up and running you can close Retrobat for now because it's time to add our games. Now before you ask, no, I'm not going to tell you where you can get retro games. I'm not allowed to share links or anything sketchy like that. I do talk about building a retro game collection in this video, more info there if you need help, but like it's probably not as simple as just googling the ROM set you want or the game name, and then clicking the first sketchy looking website you see. Definitely not that easy. Nope. So I'm just going to blur the screen and do not that. And wow, look at that. After a few minutes of definitely not Googling things, I've got a little collection of games for each system to get started with. Let's add them to Retrobat. In the Retrobat install folder, open up the ROMs folder, and inside you'll find a glorious buffet of system folders, NES, Super Nintendo, Genesis, PlayStation. These are the folders where your games go. So just drop your games into the right folders. Use your big beautiful brain to figure out which ones go where. And if you're not sure, the Retrobat wiki has all the answers you could need, including which systems need extra files, like BIOS files. Speaking of BIOS files, some systems need them, but most don't. So just try stuff and see what happens. If a system does end up needing a BIOS file, you can find it on the internet, wink wink, and drop it into the BIOS folder inside the Retrobat directory. Again, the wiki has all the file names that you need. Once that's done, you can restart Retrobat and your games should show up and be ready to go. And believe it or not, the hard part's over. Let's play some games. And here's the cool part, the games will just work. I know, it's wild. Retrobat comes with emulators built in and they're pre-configured too. So just fire up a game and look at that. The game loads up with proper scaling and nice crisp visuals and even a slick like bezel frame around the screen. Ooh, fancy. You can play with your keyboard if you want. The default keys are listed in the Retrobat wiki, link below. But for Nintendo games, it's the arrow keys to move and X and S for the A and B buttons. Escape quits the game. But the real way to play retro games is with a controller, obviously. So connect that up and you'll see a little controller connected message. And it should just work all on its own. Retrobat has some good hotkeys for all the usual retro magic, saving and loading your state, and exiting the game, even opening the RetroArch menu. I'll put a few of the important ones up on the screen. And as always, you can find all this info on the wiki. Sometimes you'll see a BIOS warning when you're launching a game. Don't panic, it's often fine. Like with Game Boy Advance, you might get that warning, but the game still runs great without a BIOS. So for some systems, it's optional. They can use a BIOS if you have one, but they don't need one. You can turn that BIOS check off in the settings menu if it bugs you. There's even a handy tool in here that shows which BIOS files Retrobat is looking for. If something's missing, that'll help you figure it out. If a system crashes or won't launch, it probably needs a BIOS. So check this menu or check the wiki and that'll tell you what, what file you need. And then you can Google your way to BIOS ownership. Some systems need extra emulators that aren't installed by default, like GameCube. That uses the Dolphin emulator. But check this out, Retrobat will download it for you and set it up for you. All you have to do is select install when prompted and it'll do the rest. Like magic, nerd magic. Now, some advanced emulator stuff like, like Nintendo Switch, that can take some extra steps. Retrobat doesn't do everything for you for every system, but if you run into issues, say it with me now, check the Retrobat wiki. Everything's in there. Everything except how to subscribe to TechTweep. No guide can teach you that. You gotta learn that on the streets.
having a front end that launches games is all well and good. And if that's all you care about, then you're you're fine. You're good to go here. But let's check out some customizations we can do to make it even better. So first things first, let's turn off the front end music. That's in the sound settings. And you can change the front end theme. It's easy to do. Open the main menu, go down to updates and downloads, and then themes. And there's a heck ton of themes in here you can browse through. Pick whichever one you want, but all the cool kids pick the TechTweeb theme. Just say it. You can apply that by backing out to the user interface menu and going to theme set and picking the TechTweeb theme. And you can also customize the theme in the theme configuration menu. Change the color and the font size. There's a few tweaks in there. Now, here's a problem. Our games list is uh, boring and we're not boring. We're fun and popular. This won't do. So let's scrape our game art so the game list looks fancy. You're going to do this in the scraper menu, but here's the thing. If you try to scrape, you're going to get a message in French that says you need an account, you filthy accountless heathen. That's what it says. Trust me, I'm from Canada. Everyone here speaks French. To fix that, you can sign up for a free account at Screen Scraper. Link below. You'll get a limited amount of daily scrapes, but that's fine if you've only got a few games. If you've got a lot of games, I suggest tossing a few bucks at their Patreon which is easily worth it for the extra scrapes you get. Enter your account info in the scraper settings and then pick your region. I pick the USA, even though I'm in Canada, elbows up, and only scrape what you need. I don't scrape videos because I just find them distracting. And manuals, I'll, I'll skip those because they're big. I'll just I'll download those on a per game basis if I ever need them. And then select which systems to scrape and hit start. You'll see a little progress thing up in the corner. My 165 games took about five minutes. If you have thousands of games, you can probably just leave this going overnight or whatever. It's going to take a while. When that's done, go to game settings, update game lists, and hey, look at that. Looking mighty fine. My games library looks good. It looks like a, a games library. My games all have screenshots and logos. I can swap the view mode and the theme options to view box art, carousel view style. Having it set up like this with the game art, this really makes it feel like a proper emulation console. I love this setup. There's a lot of things you can do in Retrobat to change the experience as well. You can open up the game settings menu and change stuff in here. You can turn on auto save and load state so that the system will save your progress when you exit the game and take you right back into it when you launch it the next time. And down here in the global options, you can set your preferences uh, with some of this stuff. For instance, if you wanted a CRT shader effect for all your games for extra nostalgia points, or to remove the bezel around the screen on the outside if you don't like that, or change to a different style of bezel. There's lots of stuff to poke through in here. All of these options here in the game settings menu are, are global settings. However, if you want uh, specific options for specific systems, for for example, if you like CRT shaders on Nintendo but not Super Nintendo, you can open up the advanced system options by pressing select and then you'll get more or less the same settings in here, but these will be specifically for the system you have open and these will override the global settings whenever you load up a game from this system. This is also where you enable specific emulator options. For example, in, in PS1, this is where you can find settings related to the game rendering, like enabling enhanced resolution to make the game more crispy. Finally, my last tip, and I love this. This is probably the most important. The one thing that makes your laptop feel like a transformer. Able to change from a boring work thing into a fun play thing with the push of a button. And that is to set Retrobat to launch with a Windows shortcut. And all you need to do for this is open up your Retrobat install folder, find retrobat.exe, create a shortcut of it by holding Alt while clicking and dragging it. You can put this right here in the same folder or wherever else you want it. And then right click that and go to properties. And in here where it says shortcut key, click on that and then press a key combo on your computer that you want to launch your retro games. Don't pick something you'll be pressing by accident. I go with Control, Alt, Shift, and F9. There's no chance I'll accidentally press that. And then click Apply there and click OK. And now, when you're using your laptop, if you want to instantly switch over to fun mode, you can just press that key combo and then, then your laptop is just transformed into a retro gaming console before your eyes. Grab your controller and that'll automatically start working. It really is magical. And that's it. That's all I wanted to show you today. Just my little setup for retro gaming on a laptop. What I use, what I recommend, how to get it running, make it look nice, and start dabbling in the dark arts of customization. There's a lot more you can learn with Retrobad and emulation in general, but this should be enough to get you rolling. And 
you can figure out more stuff as you go. Just like life, if you think about it. No one gives you a manual. You fumble through menus and try to make sense of settings and hope you don't accidentally mess something up and, and be clueless about how to fix it. You're born, you look around, you're like, wait, which one of these buttons does taxes? You make mistakes, you mess up your display resolution, you forget to back up your heart. But eventually you learn, you tweak things, you grow, you add a CRT filter to the chaos and suddenly it feels warm and nostalgic instead of broken. And that's it from me. I'm TechDweeb. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.